We've talked about estate tax issues that relate to IRAs and other similar retirement accounts, but you should also know that there are income tax rules that are important. Keep in mind that when the participant or owner of a retirement plan account dies, the current general rule for how quickly the IRA account must be withdrawn is five years. As we prepare this update in June 2019, however, Congress is poised to enact legislation that changes that to 10 years, so keep that in mind. Anyway, for now, the general rule is five years, but there are exceptions to the rule, and the exceptions are the ones that have been very attractive to most people when they are planning. As I discuss the exceptions below, however, keep in mind that the new rules that we are likely to get will take many of the favorable exceptions away, and the, ma and the maximum period of time in which the beneficiary of the IRA death benefit must withdraw the IRA will likely be 10 years. One important exception has been that if you name an individual as the beneficiary of the IRA, then at your death, the death benefit can be paid out in dribs and drabs called required minimum distributions over the life expectancy of the individual beneficiary. But keep in mind, that will likely be changed to 10 years. A surviving spouse is a special type of individual beneficiary, however. The new rules that will probably be enacted will retain the special status of the surviving spouse. In the case of a surviving spouse who is the beneficiary of her deceased husband's IRA, the surviving spouse can take the IRA, roll the whole balance over into her own IRA, and treat it as her own. There is no income tax imposed when the surviving spouse does so. As a result, the surviving spouse has no required minimum distributions until age 70 and a half, which may change under the new rules to an older age, like 72 or 75, at which time she would have to start taking required minimum distributions and, like I said before, it would be in dribs and drabs over a period a little longer than her life expectancy. Since IRAs and other similar retirement accounts earn income and grow on a tax-deferred basis, they have a favored tax environment, and the idea is to try to keep the funds in the favored tax environment as long as possible. So the strategy typically used is to stretch those payments out for the longest possible time. As a result, if the spouse is the beneficiary of your IRA, you want to make sure that the spouse can receive the IRA account balance and roll it over into her own IRA and then take required minimum distributions in the minimum amount. Then at her death, the balance in the account goes to the beneficiaries and the beneficiaries can choose to withdraw the IRA over a longer period of time. So you've got deferral in a number of different places. One, when the IRA is paid to the surviving spouse and rolled over. You've got deferral there because the surviving spouse is not required to take any required minimum distributions until age 70 and a half or older under the probable new law. And then you've got deferral over the life expectancy of the spouse. And then when the spouse dies, you've got deferral for some time when paid to the beneficiaries. If a non-spouse is the beneficiary of the IRA, then under current June 2019 law, there's deferral for a period of time equal to the life expectancy of the beneficiary. Under proposed law that is likely to be enacted, the maximum deferral to a non-spouse will probably be limited to 10 years, although there probably will be a few exceptions. And of course, if an individual is not the beneficiary of the IRA, in other words, if any of the IRA balance could go to a non-individual like an estate or a charity or to a non-qualifying trust, then under current June 2019 law, the benefit must be paid out over five years and no longer than that. But then this may be changed to 10 years under the new law. Under current June 2019 law, that's the case if the IRA owner has not reached the required beginning date. That is currently 70 and a half before he or she passes away. Under current June 2019 law, if the IRA owner participant 
reaches the required beginning date and then dies, the beneficiary may take the death benefit over the remaining life expectancy of the owner participant determined as of the date of the owner participant's death. And that's true even if the beneficiary is not an individual. While we prepare this update, the tax law on retirement account death benefit distributions is in a state of flux. We can't know for certain what the new provisions will look like. When the House and the Senate get together to reconcile their different versions of the new law, changes will be made and the final result could be different from what I just described. In our next segment, we'll be talking about revocable living trusts, will substitutes, and probate avoidance.